Hey folks, welcome to another YouTube video on the Island Pipes. My name is Jason Rouse. Uh, as always, if you do like the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment, it all helps. The topic of today's discussion is going to be a lesser known Island Pipe maker from the last century. Uh, a fellow who made work in the style of kind of a little bit Leo Rosen, a little bit Taylor Brothers. Uh, and nobody seems to know much about him, uh, but I have in my hand a chanter made by the fella and we're going to have a little look at some of his work. So without further ado, let's take a bit of a deep dive into uh, the work of Michael Keenan. There isn't much in the way of information on Michael Keenan, but uh, a few years ago I managed to find on the RTE website, they uh, went through and systematically uploaded a lot of old documentary footage and there was in fact a documentary of a unknown pipe maker uh, in making some pipes. Uh, so what I'll do is, somebody's uploaded that to YouTube and I'll put a link to that in the description, but let's just have like, a little clip of it here just so we can get an idea of the man making and his like methods and his approach. Well, I don't make a great living from it, indeed, because um, it's, it's entirely a one-man job. But I get something out of it that will keep me out to keep me going. In fact, I never went into it to make money out of it. It was from the desire to help, help myself and to help others. Keenan also made uh, a number of different pipes from sort of Scotland, uh, Northumbrian small pipes. He was pretty much the only maker, I suppose, uh, at the time who was uh, offering all these different types of instruments. You can see a lot of his Highland pipes uh, on the Bagpipe Museum website. And there's a really nice set of three-quarter Ellen pipes in the St. Cecilia's Hall up in Edinburgh. I actually helped them to uh, identify the maker with this one because this particular set was unstamped but yeah it really gives you a nice idea of the type of instrument that he was making you know so a very generous ivory uh, a lot of silver so like silver lined uh, drones that sort of thing so before we move on let's take a little look at the chanter up close so it's got these lovely sharp crisp kind of tone holes on it we've got no scalping on here that you can really see of everything kind of falls in line with what you'd expect from like a, I guess like an older style chanter before the scalping became like a big thing. It feels really nice to hold the the extra like blocks for the keys. Uh, it really gives you something like to, to hold on to. So if you like like a chunky chanter, it's a really really nice chanter to to, to have in your hand. You've got the bigger tone holes here but still not as big as like a lot of modern makers uh do uh but still like you know bigger than a taylor taylor chanter that you would get or bigger than a, a flat chanter certainly uh very generous ivory like look at the size of these things uh he was a man who loved the ivory and he loved the silver as well so yeah silver and ivory quite simple markings on here yeah definitely like leo rosam inspired with that you know, and this little, you know, sleeve inspired by Rosam as well. But yeah, just, just a very unusual sort of uh, chanter in terms of like what the aesthetic of it goes for. You know, it's neither one thing nor the other, uh, but still pretty cool. Uh, this key sprung really well uh, still, and then just like a little bit like that to pull it out. So yeah, look at the size of that spring. Yeah, that's a chunky one, all right. Yep, no problems with that, even with the old bit of leather, it's still really airtight in there. Uh, the bottom of the chanter has one of these, take it off, one of these little pop valves. And it's a very, very simple mechanism, this one. It's just sort of gravity uh, operated. Uh, might have been somebody made this one afterwards, because it's, you know, obviously a different makeup on the, on the silver, different types of silver. 
and and the bottom of it has been replaced over time bit of brass on that uh but it's actually airtight even with this old bit of leather um yeah like the single dot in the middle that was like something leo rosen used to do uh I'll show you one of those in a second uh yeah so the chanter itself top to bottom is 14 inches so yeah like a classic d chanter from 100 years ago yeah very very similar to like the early leo rosen stuff but yeah just generally really well made actually you know nothing's wrong no no bends no breaks no cracks yeah just nicely made chanter uh what i'll do is i'll just compare this with the uh, leo rosen chanter so this is an early leo chanter and you can sort of see it's actually very very similar in terms of like the proportions and where things are supposed to be and just the, the, the general i guess uh ideas so he was definitely aware of of the work of the rosens these two bits here leo used to do the quite chunky uh blowpipe on these and this other set uh, the solo chanter made by michael keenan is no exception to that uh, both of these are 14 inches so yeah your typical d uh, this one has like you know the single dot at the bottom and yeah like a little aftermarket although made by leo uh pop and valve on that let's take this off and if we hold them together we can have a look at where the tone holes go and you can see that they're very very similar in terms of like size you know this being like an early leo there's like not a massive deviation in making the holes bigger or smaller or whatever uh, but there is something that's a bit strange in that the e-hole is a bit further down on this one uh, comparatively speaking so all in all there's a lot of similarities between the the work of mr keenan here and the uh the work of Leo Rosen and I I'll have a little play in a second then you can have a have a hair of it so there's quite a lot tonally similar as well like acoustically similar with like a Leo Rosen chanter you know a lot of the sort of singing back D's uh, you know that sort of crispness the tone the volume uh, everything you'd really expect from a Leo chanter but uh, from a different maker so yeah I've just got like a nice new read on this uh, made by Caesar Pastor uh, which I'm gonna take it for a little spin and yeah, hopefully we can hear how this one sounds. Okay, let's go. Okay, uh, that's enough of that. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons uh, or leave me a comment. Uh, really helps out the channel a lot and hopefully allow me to make some more videos like this. So 
Yep. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks for watching. See you again later.